today. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Praise God. I was excited. I'm still excited about being in God's house, fellowshipping with God's people, Amen. prayerfully giving a word from the Lord. Amen. If you're excited about being here, won't you just put your hands together one time? I need to know there's some light for this church this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. The children's church, our children's church, you can be dismissed. Children's church. For those of us that remain, let's go into the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse number 20. Praise God. When you have it, say amen. Amen. 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. Y'all gonna make me preach this morning. I see it already. <laughs> Don't be distracted by the screen. Don't be distracted by anything that's going on or who's around you or who's not around you. Amen. If you came to get a word, say, I came to get a word this morning. Amen. Amen. This time, say it like you mean it. I came to get a word this I morning. I came to get a word this morning. Praise God. Let's go to the word of God. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. Real quick, tell your neighbor, it's time for a demonstration of power. It's time for a demonstration of power. It's time for a demonstration, a demonstration of power. Father God, we thank you for this time. We ask you to maximize this time and speak to us out of the volume of your holy book. Words of life, clarity, authority, and conviction. We stand at the ready to receive the infallible truth in your word today. Feed us till we're spiritually satisfied. Feed us, Father God. And we'll be careful to give your name the glory, honor, and praise because you alone are worthy. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I believe, beloved, that all that has already taken place in this Landmark here. Thank you, ushers, for your kind and friendly service. You may rest off of your feet. I believe that all that has already taken place in this year and the years leading up to this landmark year was God setting the stage for the remnant church to come forward. God is up to something and he's up to something big. I believe sometimes, though, we get it twisted because we look at reality that's based on facts and not based on faith. And it is cumbersome and difficult to walk in faith when we see facts that are contrary to what our faith professes. Beloved, times are bad in this world and they are only going to get worse because the earth is literally groaning or a groaning with growing pains and birthing pains waiting for the manifestation of the sons and the daughters of God. So today, beloved, I want to take you a little deeper into the spirit uh, that goes a little deeper than discernment. Anybody have discernment in church? Yes, Anybody know what discernment is? It's just the ability, capability, availability to feel something that you cannot see, praise God. But I want to take you a little bit deeper, and that is the application of that which you have discerned. It is the application of the faith that God has given you that will lead to a demonstration of power. Now we have spoken the declarations, we have recited the affirmations, we have prayed the prayers of faith, we have quoted the scriptures that have power, but now God is saying it's time for a demonstration of that which you have already declared. If you said that God is a healer, God needs you to level up in your faith and believe that God is actually a healer. If you have been declaring affirmations that God is a provider, God is saying it's time to level up and start to look, tangibly look, for provisions that God has already said can come your way. If you're saying that God is a restorer, then it's time for you to level up and look for a demonstration of God's restorative power in your life. Somebody say, in my life. In my life. If you really believe in the words that you affirm and the words that you declare, God is saying, I'm about to demonstrate everything.
thing that the people that are walking and talking by faith have been declaring all this time. In this season, beloved, it's not enough just to declare it, but you've got to start to believe that which you have declared. If you don't believe what you said, you can't expect a manifestation to come in your life. But if you really believe that God has made you the head and not the tail above and not beneath the lender and not the borrower, God says it is demonstration time. God is about to demonstrate something in your life, in your house, in your health, in your finances, on your job, with your friends and your enemies. God is about to have a demonstration of dunamis power that will buck your eyes and buck your friends' eyes and nobody will be able to determine what God had just done in your life. God is up to something so big that you're going to turn around and look and say, look at what God just did. He's going to do it in such a way that you're not going to be able to pinpoint it. You're not going to be able to tell anybody what happened because you don't even know what happened. I'm talking about houses you didn't build. I'm talking about finances you didn't work for. I'm talking about God doing something in your body. The doctor saw it last month, but he don't see it this month. I'm talking about something that's going to provoke you to give God some glory. matter is giving God glory. Let me show you something. Let me show you something. Number one, tell your neighbor you're gaining momentum. Oh, they didn't believe it because they don't see it. Tell, tell the neighbor on the other side, you're gaining momentum. You see, the reason they didn't look at you when you said it is because they ain't doing nothing. See, if you're not in motion, if you don't have movement, you can't gain momentum. But if you are one that is in motion, you have movement, you're doing something, then God told me to tell you, keep on moving because you're gaining momentum. Movement, beloved, is motion, maneuvering, development, transition to depart from and to arrive to. And if you're one that is moving somewhere and you have motion, God told me to tell you, you're gaining momentum. Some of you are gaining momentum because you heard the voice of God. God gave you a vision and you stepped out on that vision that God gave you, believing by faith and standing on his word. Now, when God gives a vision, it's not always complete with full disclosure. Or in other words, God will just tell you to move. And you've got to be acclimated enough to the voice of God to move when he said to move. He won't tell you what the end result is going to be. He will just tell you to move. Now, when God gives a command to move, watch this. He won't tell you to move if he didn't give you the tenacity to move in what he told you to do. So if you have a business idea or something on your mind, on your heart, in your spirit, and God said move toward it, well, don't talk back to God and say, God, I don't have the provision. God, I don't have the credit. God, I don't have the money. God, nobody's endorsing me. When God told you to move, he has that investor right in front of your next step. When God told you to walk in ministry, don't tell him, God, well, I can't quote scripture. Or, God, I don't know how to do this. Or, God, I can't do that. When God says to move, he already has the next step. Look at this. God plays chess. He don't play checkers. When you play checkers, you got to do one move at a time. But when God is walking straight in your life, he already moved the rook ten places ahead. He already has the bishop moving where he's going to move. It's just your job to be obedient when God says to move. Real quick, ask your neighbor, are you ready to move? Are you ready to move? Are you ready to move? Are, are, are you really ready to move into the things of God? When God is about to give a demonstration of power, he will spiritually take you ahead of time and give you hope against hope, even in the face of impossibilities. Let me say that again. When God is getting ready to give you a demonstration of power, he will move you ahead in time. Somebody say, I'm a time traveler. Oh, he will travel you in time in your mind and in your spirit and let you see what shall be. Yeah. 
If you ever get to see what shall be, you'll never be worried about what is right now. Because God gave you a vision of something better, something bigger, so you'll face God or you'll face your trials even in the face of impossibilities. Impossibilities is just an opportunity to stir up your creativity. That when you know that God has something better for you, you won't allow for your nasty now to deter what God is about to do in your life. Somebody say, it's about to be big. I just need one person to drink. It's about to be big. Thank you, sister. Thank you. What God is about to do in my life, it's about to be big. I can't quantify it or qualify it. I just have a, what the old folks call an unction of the Holy Ghost in my spirit. That it's about to be big. I get up in the morning. I ain't got two nickels to rub together. But I know that it's about to be big. In my life, in this season, there is going to be an awesome demonstration of power. Somebody say, in my life. life. Come on, say, in my house. Uh Somebody say, in my mind. In my my spirit. spirit. You're gaining momentum, beloved. If you're moving, God says, keep moving. Mm -hmm. You see, the person climbing the mountain can't see how far he's gone. Because his eyes is on the top of the mountain. Good God Almighty. That when you're climbing up the rough, what I want to say, the rough side of the mountain. My elder gave us revelation on that in Bible study the other night. He said that you're climbing the rough side of the mountain because you can't climb on the smooth side of the mountain because you won't have nowhere to put your feet. So the side side you climb has to be rough so you can put your head in the cliff of the rock. You think it's rough, but God said it's necessary. It can't be easy all the time. It's necessary. How else you gonna climb? Everybody want a smooth path, but those with a smooth path ain't climbing nowhere. But when you have a rock mountain to climb, tell your neighbor, I need somewhere to put my feet. I need a cleft to put my hand in. So he gave me a whole new revelation of the song. I'm climbing up the rough side of the mountain. Don't settle. Y'all sit down. I'm going to work. I'm going to work today. Y'all can just relax. If you understand, that's up to you, but I got this. Don't settle for what you currently see, hear, or feel with your natural senses. God has given somebody in here an unexplainable sense of greatness and an awesome allocation of faith. If that's you, talk to me. If that's you, talk to me. He sent this word for somebody. I just got to make sure I hit the right target. You have an unexplainable sense of greatness up in your spirit. You know you can't qualify right now. You just know when you get up in the morning, I'm better than this. I'm better than this. I'm better than this. I'm better than this. That's God trying to demonstrate power in you. For somebody in here, he's giving them an awesome allocation of faith. You went, oh my God, you first started, your faith was right here. But now that you've got both feet on the ground, your faith is right here. And you believe in God can do anything but fail. Look, you won't know these people because these people are not demonstrative like the anointed people are. You see, anointed people will dance all over the whole church and then go cuss you out at Walmart. These people, you won't see them dancing all over the church, but God is stirring something on the inside. They have a sense of greatness, and they're working quietly for God. They're building for God outside of church. They're doing things for God that nobody knows about, and God has elevated their level of faith to believe that he can do anything. But fail. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but you have an awesome sense of great. Watch this. People confuse your confidence with arrogance. Who am I talking to? I know I'm talking to somebody. You don't let nobody see you with your head down. You don't let nobody see you with your face messed up. You you come out every day on cloud nine. You walk around like you're the best thing ever to happen to the world. And they say, look at her, she arrogant. She thinks she all that. But they ain't said two words to you. But the moment they talk to you, they'll hear God come out of your mouth. And your confidence level is in the God of your salvation. 
and uh, the God of the scripture. God told me who I was, uh, so I'm just acting like God told me. Who am I talking to? Don't let anybody mistake your confidence for arrogance. They want you to walk around like you don't serve an awesome God. They want you to walk around worried about what everybody has to say. They want you to walk around worried about what's about to happen. But tell your neighbor, don't you dare hold your head down. Come on, tell them, tell them. Don't you dare hold your head down. Another day, I don't care what's going on. I don't care who left. I don't care who did you wrong. As long as God is your source, hold your head up, stick your chest out. Yeah, uh, the old folks say fake it till you make it I don't, I don't believe in faking in anything <laughs> see when you fake it you don't really believe it uh -oh, go ahead, man. but if you believe the word of God yes, if you believe that there's a level of greatness yes, you don't walk around like it's already happened yes, you see the believers walk by yes, and not by yes, okay come on now he that comes to God must first believe that he is and he is a Rewarder of them that sometimes seek them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Not sometimes. He's a rewarder of them that seek them sometimes. No. No. Seek them when things are going wrong. No. What is the world I'm looking for? Diligent. Diligently seek them. Thank you, He is a rewarder. So that means what? When I get up, I'm seeking them. That's right. When I got a money in the bank, I'm seeking them. That's right. When there's a minus sign in front of the one, I'm still seeking them. Right. When my body feels good, I'm seeking them. Yeah. When my best friend walked away, I'm still seeking them. Yeah. But those that diligently, diligently, diligently seek them. Uh, yeah. Watch this. You don't know who these people are that's gaining momentum because they don't look powerful. They don't look uh, church powerful. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, church powerful are people that walk around speaking in tongues the whole service. Church powerful are those that sit with their legs crossed on the front row, looking important because God done gave them something. Church powerful are those that don't want to bless God in front of nobody because it's uncouth. Um, it's not right to praise God. That's church powerful. But real power, beloved, uh, is knowing what God did for you and acting like you know. You see, your God did a radical thing in your life. You might not say it now because you've been saved for five years uh, and you got a little importance in front of you. But if you want to look back over your shoulder and see what God drug you out of, I bet you begin to praise Him. Uh, if you look back over your shoulder and see what God delivered you from, uh, I bet you begin to praise him. God did a radical thing. So God deserves a radical praise. Oh, I know you ain't gonna say it. I know you're too important to say it in front of your in front of your co-believers. But when you I know we like to testify and talk about what people did to us. But a real testimony is what you did to somebody else sometimes. And God still saw fit. Somebody say he delivered me. Oh, you didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. Somebody else say he delivered me. He delivered me. For some, he had to go a little bit lower than others. That's right. See, I can't speak for you, but when God came to get me, he had to get down on both knees. No, no, let me update that. He had to lay down and reach down in the gutter to get me up. So when you see me up here acting wild, when you see me up here screaming at the top of my lungs that Jesus saved, when you see me getting radical for Christ, that's because I know that Christ did a radical thing for me. And every time you praise God, you are gaining momentum in the kingdom of God. Every time you tell God thank you, you're gaining momentum in the kingdom of God. You've been primed and pumped to demonstrate God's power in this hour. So you've got to keep on and continue and constantly tell God thank you. Thank you. Real quick, let's practice. Somebody just say thank you. Thank, thank you. God. Don't yell at Don't yell at Don't, Don't yell at Say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord. Just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. All right, this time a little bit louder. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My brother don't beat me to it. You're a real prophet. 
Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. This time, say a little bit louder. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, y'all ain't getting louder. But this time, a little bit louder, say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, now you're getting it this time. A little bit louder, say, thank you, Yahweh. Thank you, Yahweh. Oh, this time, a little bit louder, say, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all getting, getting it this time. A little bit louder, say, glory to God. Nothing that voice tell me to do. Uh, uh, 
But when demonic suggestions really come, they seem plausible for the moment. They sound good, sounds like it's something that should be done, but it's rooted in evil. It's rooted to get you off of the path, off of the momentum that God had you on. So you got to know the source. Somebody say the source of the voice. Source. Come on, say it again. The source of the voice. When you know the source of the voice, Bible says my sheep hear my voice and they will not stray from me and nobody will be able to pluck them out of my hands. When you know the source of the voice, you can move with confidence. I'm convinced that sometimes we don't move into the things of God because we're not sure or confident in the source of the voice. We, don't know it. we believe that it's God, but we don't really know it's God. We, it might be us, it might be demonic suggestion, it might be the Holy Spirit. But that's when you have to activate your discernment to know when God is speaking. Have you ever been around somebody and it seemed like the room got cold? Y'all yeah. yep. ain't gonna talk to me. Yes. You might be sitting beside somebody now in the room is cold. My God. Have you ever been around an atmosphere and it just seemed off? Yep. Somebody tell, tell your neighbor that's your discernment. That's your, discernment. your discernment trying to tell you something. Yeah. Exactly tell you right. something. Never allow people to get you to determine that your discernment is off. Amen. Amen. I don't know who that was for. Uh, but, but, but sometimes you know when something ain't right. Amen. You know that something is a little off. You know in your spirit, but you're afraid to act on it because somebody done told you you're too holy. Anybody ever been called holy? Uh -huh. Anybody ever been called too holy? Uh -huh. Talk to me. You ever been called? And they never say you're doing too much. If they, if they ever told you that at least one time, you need to check your walk. You need to do a little bit more. Because something about holy rollers, Bible thumpers, irritate the demons in people. So you got to do enough to what people call you holy. You a holy roller. You one of them saved folks. You don't cuss. You don't talk about girls or guys. You don't do none of that. Why y'all get quiet? Can nobody say that about you? Let's quiet. Somewhere in your walk, huh? somebody ought to call you a holy roller. See how quiet it just got? Right, man. This is a sailor moment. <laughs> because if the world loves you, uh, like the church loves you, uh, tell your neighbor something ain't right. Because they hated Jesus. Right. And he just tried to help them. What makes you think everybody going to love you? Oh, y'all. What makes you think everybody going to think you the best thing that happened since life, Brady? If you're really for God and you really love God every now and then, you will call sin, sin. You will call things out. Now, you can't call things out if you just got finished doing the thing you're trying to call out. Somebody say amen. Amen. Say amen. Say amen. Say amen. You can't call it out unless there is some type of definitive separation from you and the thing. Now, there are some things that the world is calling normal that God has called abnormal. You know that you are holy role. When you still call abnormal, abnormal, you don't flip because the world has flipped. You don't call sin a situation. You don't get it confused because the world is confused. The landmark God has set cannot be changed. And God is looking for some people to level up in their faith and stand flat-footed and say, well, my Bible says this. The God of the Scripture says that. You don't have to say, thus be and thou to quote the word of God. You just got to know what the word means. And when it's time to speak up, I'll tell you they will speak up about it. Speak up about it. Oh, speak up about it. You've got to declare what God has said. And you've got to recognize when it's revelation. There is about, probably already is, to be a resurgence of the gifts of the Holy Spirit operating in the church. Because there has been a resurgence of spiritual Sodom and Gomorrah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So there's about to be a resurgence of the gifts of the Spirit operating in the church. Huh? Yes. He's about to bring, bring prophecy back. He's about to bring the word of knowledge back. He's about to bring the gifts in operation back in the church. Mm -hmm. And it won't be who you think it's going to be. Mm -hmm. There are some people right here in Chosen that have those gifts that nobody would suspect or expect are operating in those gifts. Mm. But when God divvies out the gifts, he has purpose behind the gift. Yes, 
He's not looking at the demonstrative actions of the person to decide whether or not they're going to get the gift. <laughs> that when God gives the gifts, it's according to their several ability, as the Bible says, that some have five, some have two, some have one. God will give it to who he knows can handle it. Yeah. Ask your neighbor, can you handle God's gifts? Yeah. Can, can, can you handle God's gifts? <laughs> so there's about to be a resurgence, a re-emanating of the gifts of God operating in the church. Don't get moved by what you see, but know that God is up to something spectacular. All right. Uh, ask real quick, say, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? No, ask yourself, is it me? Is it me? Is it me? Say it one more time, is it me? Now this time, ask your neighbor, is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Did they answer? It's me. It's me. It's definitely me. I got I got at least one gift. I got at least one to offer. I have I have at least one that I can offer. If we can get everybody in here that has at least one gift to offer that gift to the body, watch this, without expectation of return. I'm gonna be preaching, I'm gonna flip the whole phone over. <laughs> if we can get at least that's the gift. I got a phone flipping gift. <laughs> If we can get at least, if we can get everybody to at least operate in one gift that they have without expectation of return, we will see the glory of God fall in this place like never before. If we can get people just to come in, some we come in to receive, but how many came in to give? I said that, I said that again. Y'all must, I must have said it too fast. We come in to receive, but how many come in to give something? Yes, yes. You come in to give. You come in to give. If you come to give, then we can really have something special when we gather together. How many know it's more than just about songs and a sermon? Yes, yes. It's more than just coming and getting songs and a sermon. I came to experience God. I came because I must see Jesus. I came because I have an expectation that God is going to do something by us gathering together. I don't care if the keyboarders don't hit it. The praise team don't no get it. The congregation is dry. I came because I must see Jesus. I can praise God all by myself. I can bless the Lord all by myself. If you bless the Lord with me, that just adds to what I already brought. I brought wood and kerosene to the fire. That I come ready lit and I'm ready to go. If you're ready to go, you will throw a log on the fire with me. If you ain't ready, watch this. Oh my God. The best firewood Wood. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I don't care if you come dry. Uh -huh. I got enough tender. Yeah, yeah. I got enough light of fluid. Yeah. Uh, no, I got match light chop on. <laughs> oh, you got to get close to me. I'm already on fire. I just need some tender to light up. Yes, if you don't light up, that's because you don't want to get lit. Oh, they almost say, I'm lit. I'm already lit. Let me go and get out of here. God is opening the portals of heaven to reveal some things to you so that you won't faint in the day of adversity, that you will endure hardness as a good soldier, that you won't have a nervous breakdown, you won't backslide and go into your former life or your former behavior. God is downloading instructions on how to keep the momentum going. Yes, sir. Anybody ever thought how messed up you used to be? Yeah. Yes. Anybody ever? Yeah. Not only one. Yeah. Not only one that just sometimes yeah. think back at the person I used to be. Yeah. And then how messed up I was and yeah. how you wouldn't like the old me like you like the new me. Hopefully you like the new me. Yeah. But you, you wouldn't like the old me. And I think back how messed up I used to be, can you? I was toe up from the floor. I, I was a real good party guy, yeah. but I wasn't a real good person. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. <laughs> Bro, we started on Wednesday. <laughs> See, the new school went to Saturday. That, that's that new stuff. The old school, they don't know about that long. We started on Wednesday. We were at work planning what was going to happen on Wednesday. <laughs> By Wednesday afternoon, we already had the whole weekend mapped out. 
I'm talking about arms to them. They sleep too much to party like we used to party. Yeah, they got to get their beauty rest. Oh, when I was on the scene, beloved, we, we got four hours of sleep for the whole weekend. We were just, we already had the next one planned out like we were in the middle of the first one. But anyway, anyway, y'all about to relapse. Come back, come back. But I sometimes think about how I used to be. And I say, Lord, I thank you that you delivered me from the old me. Amen. Because you wouldn't like the old me. Tell you that, but you wouldn't like the old me. No, no, no. You, you better pray I stay saved. You better pray I stay delivered. You better pray that the Lord keeps me because you don't want me to revert back to the old me. Because the old me will cuss you out in a heartbeat. The old you ain't got to say nothing for me to get mad at you. The old me is not a likable type of person. The new me has gravitated toward the blessing of God. And now I'm slower to speak, slower to anger. That I know that I've been changed. Somebody say, I know I've been changed. I know I've been checkable. I know that I've been changed. And the old me is not somebody... You really want uh, There has been a change. There has been a change in my life because God has opened the portals of heaven. And he showed me that what has been was just a, a template or a runway to get me to what is about to be. I wonder if I'm the only one in here that has an expectation of greatness. Come on, talk to me. You, you expect something greater. Come on, talk to me. Something greater. Than where you are now. You, you expect something, and sometimes your expectations are not always something you can articulate. There you go. There you go. You, you feel it, but you, can, you, don't know, you don't have the words to put on what. Who am I talking to this morning? You ain't got the words. There is not the right set of words. You can't even put a sentence together to, to prove what it is you're expecting, but you have an expectation of something. That's how you know it's God because expectations from God don't come in sentence form. All right. Okay. Good God. All right. oh, the expectation from God is not always something you can qualify through words. That, that sometimes God will just give you an unction that something is greater and you just walk around feeling like ah, something is going to happen. I don't know what it is. You see, people that expect something from God walk around on edge. Not a nervous edge. But they walk around expecting this might be the moment God does what I feel. Oh my God. It's called hope against hope. You have a hope that something better is about to happen. So you get up in the morning with that hope on your mind. You go to bed with that hope on your mind. And it's not predicated on what you have. Hope is not just for poor people. There are some rich people that still have hope in the kingdom. There are successful people that still have hope in the kingdom. There are people that are doing things that are turning around giving God glory. And God is just piling it all because they were in motion. They were in right. movement and they have an expectation that no matter how good things are going, it can always go better. No matter how good things are going now, they're expecting God to do more. And the person on this side is like, man, y'all got it made. You can just rest in the shade and the person that's making it is like, no, nah, this is just the tip of the iceberg. We did this little bit, but we're going to show this back to God because God is going to give us more. God understands People that have hope. You see, in this season I'm in, I don't mind people not having hope. But I'm not surrounding myself with people that don't have hope. I don't mind people not expecting anything. But I refuse to surround myself with people that don't expect anything. I need to be around somebody that's doing better, that knows more that has the script that I need to get to my next level. I need to be around people that make me pray. Watch this. I need to be around people that refuse to let me dial up 1-800-CRY-BABY every time something is going wrong. Anybody ever need, I need a good slap me back into reality, friend. Anybody got that slap me back into reality, friend? 
Everybody ain't got that because some people just, they'll flow with you when you say it. But I, I need that slap me back into reality, friend. Not physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally. I need somebody to slap me back into reality when I start feeling bad about myself. When I start getting low into the floor. I need somebody to say, boy, you know better than that. You know what God said. Don't let this moment in time dictate what God is about to do in the portal of time. Everybody needs that one confidant. We all got comrades and constituents, but do you have a confidant? Do you have somebody that rolls with you when everybody else has forsaken you? Who in here got a person like that? Talk to me. Talk to me. You, you got one person. You got one. Okay. You're a blessed bunch of people. You're blessed when you have somebody that refuses to let you fail and refuses to let you fall. I call them the tribe. I call them the tribe. There's a difference between a mob and a march. You see, some people have a mob of people around them, right. and none of them understand who they are. Uh -huh. But when you have a march, you see, in a march, everybody walks succinctly together. Uh -huh. This person doesn't go over in this lane, this person doesn't go over in that lane, but they march together and they have their own assignment, but they all seem like one. Uh -huh. That's when you know you have a circle and not a cage. Uh -huh. When you have a cage, everybody's all over each other, and your best friend is somebody else's best friend, and they have another best friend. All your business out on the street because you told somebody to tell them, don't tell nobody. Then they told somebody to tell them, don't tell nobody. And before you know it, your business is all the way in Jacksonville, and you told somebody next door. But when you have. <laughs> Anybody ever had that happen? Yes. But when you have a try. When you have that confidant, that person that refuses to let you fall, then they send out, my next point, a report. This report gets sent out to heaven. I don't know about you, but I need somebody that's willing to pray for me. Amen. 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 Who in here is praying for Pastor Shy? Amen. You praying? Okay, thank you. Thank you. I need you to pray for me. Just like I pray for you. I need you to call my name. If you want to know my middle name, you got to see me after service because I ain't saying that. <laughs> Shut up, boy. <laughs> but call my name out to God in prayer. I need somebody that's, that's willing to pray for me even when they don't know anything about me. You ain't got to know what I'm going through to lift me up. Like I don't need to know what you're going through to lift me up because every time you pray you send a report to heaven about what they can be. Amen. You see sometimes you know too much you say Lord fix this, fix that. God got his hands on it and you just see it from your perspective. So you're asking God to fix something that God has taken them through. Mm. Oh my God. God bring them out of that situation when God put them in that situation to test the metal, to test the strength, to see how strong they were. And you're praying against the will of God because you know what's going on. But the best prayers are when you don't know what's going on. You see, you ain't got but a few prayers to pray when you don't know what's going on. You say, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it already is. That's right. Hey, that prayer works. Tell your neighbor, that prayer works every time. That prayer works every time. Because his will might not be your will for them. His will might not be their will for them. But Father knows best. So you say, Lord, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And whatever you take them through, give them the strength to endure what it is you take them through. Because you never know they may be in the valley. But God may be giving them strength in the valley. Oh, God. You see that they're down, but you don't know how they're down, why they're down, how long they've been down, or if they're on their way out. So tell your neighbor, don't pray to pull them out of the pit. Come on, say it. Don't pray to pull them out of the pit. Because God may have them in the pit for a season. And you're praying, God, pull them out. And God said, no, I ain't pulling them out. I just put them in. Say, Lord, pull them out. And God said, no, they ain't ready yet. Say, Lord, pull them out. They're suffering. No, they ain't suffering. They're just learning a lesson. You see, because if you're a believer, you don't lose. You learn. You don't lose nothing. But you learn lessons. Right. All right. When the blacksmith puts the sword in the fire, he puts it in to burn off everything that don't belong. He never takes his eyes off the sword that he put in the fire. It gets hot. Things get burned off. But the blacksmith has his eyes on the sword. You see, sometimes it hurts to be healed. 
Jesus. That's doable stuff right there. You can put that on Facebook, get 50 likes. Sometimes it hurts to be healed. See, when God is really ready, you see, when you go into surgery, the only way you know it didn't hurt is because they put anesthesia on you. Uh -huh. But if they left you where you were and didn't give you anything, it would hurt for them to perform surgery on you. Yes, you don't know it hurt because they put you to sleep. Uh -huh. But when you wake up, you feel the pain of what just happened to you. That's right. That's right. So what's happening in this season, God put some of y'all to sleep and perform surgery. You didn't know how bad it hurt. Everybody looking at you like they must be going through some pain. But you walking around singing in the rain because you don't know what's going on. But now that you've woken up, you feel the pain of what God just did. It's not a hurt pain. It's a pain of birth. Because God is about to birth a ministry out of your belly. He's about to birth a business out of your belly. And now you're feeling the pain trying to figure out, Lord, what do I do now? I went to bed and didn't have a vision. And I woke up and now I have a dream. That dream came from God and he's trying to get into birth out of your spirit. But you've got to determine whose report you're going to believe. Somebody say, I believe the report of the Lord. I believe the report of the Lord. Amen. What is the report of the Lord for you? Tell your neighbor real quick if you know what the report of the Lord is for you. Ain't nobody going to say nothing on you. Tell your neighbor, what is the report of the Lord for you? If you can't just say what the Lord wants me to prosper. Mm. See how quiet y'all just got The Lord wants me to be blessed yes. That's the report of the Lord for me yes. The Lord made me a millionaire yes. I ain't got the millions yet but that's, that's the report I believe yes. The Lord told me I would be the head and not the tail He told me I would be above he, he told me I can do all things through Christ That's the report of the Lord for me I believe that report Now there are other reports that people are saying about me But I'm not going to give you that report Because I don't believe it I believe what the Lord has said about me And that's the report I'm going to protect Or I'm going to project on everybody That will listen And you will know When the mail hit my house You will know when that first million Hit my mailbox When y'all come in church And have the chair to turn upside down when y'all come to church and y'all see me on the altar blessing God like I done lost all my mind. When y'all come to church and I walk in with the deed uh, to the land that we're supposed to get, you gonna know the Lord done gave that boy some money. The Lord done gave that boy a million. He done sold it back. When you, you will know when the Lord blesses. Because I'm going to tell everybody he did it for me. Watch this. And when he does it, I'm going to keep my eyes open for him to do it again. Anybody right. want God to bless you again like He blessed you before? Yeah. Anybody ever had a report so good you say, Lord, you got to do it again. Yeah. You got to bless me again. You did so well that first time, I need you to do it okay. again. Okay. Let me get to my last point. Tell your neighbor, go get your life back. Go, 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 go get your life. Go, go get your life back. Amen. That was the wrong neighbor. Tell somebody that's not close to you, go get your life back. Go get your life. Go. Go. Go get. The Bible says the thief cometh not but to kill, steal, and to destroy. But I am come that you might have life. And thank you, brother, and have that life more abundantly. John 10 and 10. God is ready able and willing to show up and show out. Somebody say in my life. In my life. In my body. In my body. In my mind. In my spirit. In my business. And in my career. I'm going to say that again. In my life. In my house. In my body. In my mind. In my spirit. In my business. And in my career. Put your hands together for the Lord. Only if you believe it. Only if you believe it. Yeah. God has prepared promises right in the middle of your problems. God is ready to give an awesome set of blessings to somebody in this season. In this season, you have two entities to deal with. You have Satan and the Savior. Sir. Satan is trying to keep you from living your best life. Mm. First of all, by giving you a term of what your best life is, mm. your best life is not 
what the world says it is. That's right. That's right. They say people are living their best life when they're out doing whatever it is they want to do and how they that ain't no. that ain't really living your best life. That's, that's living right. a life, but that's not living your yeah. best life. Your best life is the life that he spoke about in John 10 that I came that you might have life and have life more, more abundantly. Oh my God. So he told me to tell you, and I'm gonna sit down. That as we level up in this season, as we <coughs> stress and strive to be what God wants us to be, you're going to have to contend with you. Okay. All right. Sure. You don't get to be the best you uh -huh. without a fight. Okay. Yes, All right. Yes, sir. You don't get to be the best version of who you are without killing the old you first. Yes. Okay. Both of you can't exist at the same time and you live your best life. There's a part of you that the Lord wants you to contend against and to kill. Mm. Yes, that part of you that doubts. Uh -huh. Oh my God. The part of you that worries. Uh -huh. The part of you that walks around in fear. Mm. My God. The part of you that has anxiety, uh -huh. that has anxiety about everything. Mm -hmm. The part of you that cares more about people than the promises of God. Yes. You don't get to be the best version of you without fighting off the old you. Mm -hmm. And I know some people will make you think that they don't have any problem. They don't have any issue. They don't ever doubt the Lord. They don't ever worry. They don't ever have anxiety. They don't ever have to get themselves together to even make it out. See, sometimes we take for granted what we do normally. Some people have to struggle and strive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We take it for granted, but some people, it's a blessing that they were able to comb their hair, brush their teeth, make it out the house, and be around people. Some of us are social butterflies and it means absolutely nothing to us but to that person that has anxiety around people. It's a right. blessing to say they made it out of the house. Yes. 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 Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. 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 There's something that people have that they take for granted that people would love All right. to have. Yes, sir. And we take for granted what God has done because it's become common place to us. Oh, my, my, my. And there's the biggest enemy of a believer is stagnation. Because you think you got rid of that old man. He ain't gone nowhere. You just ain't encountered that person that hit that button yet. That's right. You know when that old man is gone when, when that same situation arises and you don't feel like doing what you used to feel like doing. That's when you know you have contended and fought off the old you so the new you can arise. Mm -hmm. right. And beloved, we're creatures of habit, so the more yes, you do yes. something, the more it becomes who you are. That's right. That's, That's right. why you have to have a habit of praying and fasting and <laughs> reading the word and doing random acts of kindness and giving of yourself because that will become a part of who you are. That's how you successfully wore off the old man. Mm -hmm. When we level up in this season, beloved, there's going to be an awesome demonstration of power. And I'm not talking about church power. Yes, sir. See, when, whenever you say demonstration of power in church, people are expecting somebody to lay hands, somebody fall out, and that's the power. No. Real power is being able to pray in your spirit yes. about what's going on in your life and believe and it manifests. Yes. Real power is speaking life and expecting to see life manifest out of your own life. Real power is loving the unlovable, forgiving the unforgivable. That's the demonstration of power that God is bringing forth in this hour. You're about to see miracles, signs, and wonders. Somebody say right here. Right here. Right here. Right here. You're about right to see here. miracles, signs, and wonders. Yes, sir, yes. There are people that God has in here right now that he's stirring up. Oh, stirring it up, can you? Stirring it up in their spirit. You don't know it because you walk by them and say, oh, that's just such and such. Oh, that's just Felicia Hillier. She, she just like to count money. But y'all don't know God is doing a work in Felicia Hillier. 
I ain't gonna look over there because she's gonna get me out of the church. But God is doing a work in her life. And if you just walk by her and neglect or to extrapolate what God is doing, see the reason she ain't come forward yet because y'all ain't extrapolated that word of knowledge God put in her belly. She kind of under the bull. But I dare you, I dare you just go and, and, and any opportunity to shake her hand and, and just pull on her spirit, pull on her spirit. I bet you that kabo I bet you that something comes out of her belly. He's given a word of knowledge. A word of pride in her spirit, in her belly. But we see her one way, so we fail to extrapolate what God is really saying. God is really saying in her life. But I dare you to start to pull on each other. Start to pull on those gifts that God has placed on the inside. And you will find that there is something that you can't see by slipping on the container on the outside. There is an anointing there deeply embedded on the inside that nobody can see. Real quick, grab your neighbor by the hand and just, just squeeze that hand. Just squeeze that hand. Squeeze the hand. Pull, pull on their spirit. Y'all got to pull on somebody's spirit. You pull on their spirit, but you squeeze the hand and you just pray, Lord, show me. Lord, show me. Mm. Squeeze the hand. Squeeze the hand. Pull on their spirit. Pull on their death. Pull on their spirit. Pull on their death. Pull on their spirit. Pull on it. Say, Lord, pull it out of them. Show me, Lord. Pull, pull it out of them. Pull it out of them. Extrapolate that goodness. He called out a whole set. Set out a little bullshit. Pull it out of him. Pull, 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 pull. I call it a little bullshit. Pull it out of him. Pull it out of him. Extrapolate that out of their spirit. They they have something you don't know they have. They they have gift in there that you don't They have the gift of healing that you don't even know they have. But you got to pull on their spirit. Pull on their spirit. While you have that hand in there, squeeze the hand just a little bit. Squeeze the hand. Pray for the person that you have held in your hand. Pray for them. You ain't got to pray out loud. You ain't got to seek them a shot. Just pray for them. Lord, bless them. Lord, I release this virtue out of my spirit. Mm. Lord, I release this virtue out of my spirit. Give it to them, God. Bless them in whatever, oh, bless them in whatever way they need it, God. In the name of Jesus. Bless them, God. Release it, God. Release it to them in the name of Jesus. Release it to them, God. In the name of Jesus. Release it to him. Release it, God. Let your healing virtue flow right now, God. Let your healing virtue flow right now, God. In the name of Jesus, see, come on, Every thing she needs, God, you got it. Every thing she desires, God, you got it. Every thing she needs, God, every thing she needs, God, every thing she desires, God, every thing she's been praying for, give her a demonstration. Give her a demonstration of your power right now in the spirit, God. I release it right now, Father God, in the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I release it in her life right now, God. Work a miracle in her life right now, God. From the crown of her head to the sole of her feet, God. Do it for her now, God. Even now, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Do it, God, in the name of Jesus. Release it. Release it in her life now, God. Hand in hand, God. Hand in hand, God. We release your 
your anointing. We release your anointing right now, Father God. Flow, river flow. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Holy boldness for you, God. To do your will, God. In spite of what anybody says. In spite of what they think. Holy boldness right now, God. Release it out of the spirit, God. Release it out of the belly, God. We tug on the spirit now, God. We tug on that anointing now, God. Let it flow, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. 